Hello, it's Dawn Michelle from Boho Tarot, and today I wanted to do a bit of a play with my Hardy Tarot. So this is a new deck that I've brought into my collection that I've been working with um, all throughout the month. And as I've been working with it, I've been looking at it going, hmm, some of the cards feel very, very Thoth-inspired. In fact, the majority of the minor arcana feels very Thoth-inspired. But there are some slight changes here and there that kind of give me the idea of leaning more toward the RWS. So I thought for fun and for my own study purposes and anybody else who might be interested in this deck, I would do a side-by-side -side comparison with the Thoth and the RWS to kind of look at where the Hardy Tarot aligns or maybe goes its own way or follows one system more than the other. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do today. I will leave timestamps as well as purchase links for everything in the description box below for you. So let's go ahead and jump in with our major arcana. So we have the Hardy Tarot here in the middle and there is going to be nudity in the Hardy Tarot just so that you know going in what to expect. And I've broken my Thoth and my Centennial down into all of the majors and the courts so we can take a look at each of them um, in turn. And of course, these are my two study decks, so they always stay in order. All right, so this was one of the things that really caught me as far as being um, not really in the, in the system of either deck, as far as not aligning with that traditional imagery. Um, in the full, we can see that the figure is kind of walking away versus in the Thoth where we have the full uh, facing us. We do have a dog here, which we also see in the Rider-Waite-Smith. Um, we don't necessarily see a cliff as we do in the Rider-Waite-Smith or any of the kind of um, alchemical or astrological associations that we see here in the Thoth pool. But one of the things I really like about this particular full card is we can see that this figure is walking from this wintry um, scene into this uh, maybe spring scene. So it really does give the idea of transition into um, something new, into something different, because he's leaving behind this wintry landscape and walking into this new way of being here. And I do really like that for the fool. So here we have our magician. And again, this magician feels more in alignment with the Rider Waite Smith. And I've, I was kind of seeing this as I was going through this deck and working with this deck that I feel like the Major Arcana in some ways more closely aligns with the Rider Waite Smith than it does with the Thoth Tarot. We have all of the things kind of floating around him, but then we also have things on the table. So it's kind of almost like, I guess, a hybrid between the two where we have all of the tools up in the air that we see in the um, Magus in the Thoth Tarot. And, but we do also have all of the other tools on the table here like we see in the Magician. Um, you can see his posture is very much like the Magician in the Waitsmith card. We also have all of the flowers and the lilies down at the bottom like we see here. So for me, it's kind of like it leans more toward the Waitsmith. So here we have our Priestess and I do feel like this Priestess maybe aligns more with the Thoth. So really interesting how it is kind of a blend, I think, of the two systems. Um, we see kind of elements from both. We have the netting here that we can see kind of represented here in this cross hatching at the top of the pillars. Again, we have the two pillars. Um, her posture is more similar to like we have in the Thoth, but we do have the crescent moon that she's sitting on here. Here we have our empress, and I love that this empress actually has like the triple faces, so it kind of reminds me of that, the triple face goddess. Um, I don't know that this really closely aligns with either one it brings a little bit of a biblical feel for me because we have the lamb in her lap um, and we have the angel wings but I do really like it I love that she's in the woods kind of reminiscent of the Wait Smith here but definitely kind of does its own thing in a way our emperor and again I think he aligns more closely with the Wait Smith emperor although he has a little bit more of a pagan vibe to him here we have our priest and this is really interesting because it really to me does its own thing. It doesn't have the feel of the, the Hierophant in either of the other two standard decks. I do wish we would have had the uh, three Aeons represented that we see in the Crowley Harris deck where we have the um, references to Isis, Osiris, and Horus. That would have been wonderful. I would have liked to have seen that in this 
particularly because I do feel like this deck does more more align more Thoth. This card to me almost gives me like Nine of Swords feeling and maybe a little bit of like Game of Thrones feeling because we have all of these swords, this very stern looking figure, which his facial expression more I think represents um, what we see going on in the, the Smith Waite Hierophant, but he has been renamed to the priest and I think that that really does tie into kind of the more dogmatic view of the Hierophant. Our lovers, which again, I think really does its own thing. I don't really see um, a ton of, of correlation between either of the decks. And I do appreciate when a deck does that. I think it's really cool when creators take their own kind of interpretation on the card. So I think here you can see that they, it very much goes its own way. I love that we have um, the kind of evolution that we see here where we see these two figures here are, are a bit younger we see them more grown up here and then we see them kind of in skeletons it definitely I think gives the idea of kind of love that lasts a lifetime which is not necessarily how I see the lover's card not really in relation to love um, but I think it does work as as in kind of like honoring that sense of self throughout your whole life, right? Of being in touch with that and in tune with that throughout your whole life. Here we have the chariot, which I feel like kind of in a little way goes its own way. Um, rather than having the four figures that we see in the Crowley Harris deck, we have two horses. Again, different from the kind of plunk down chariot we see in the Waite Smith deck, where this chariot is definitely in motion. It's moving. We also have the master masculine and feminine figures represented on the card. The feminine figure has a bow and arrow. I love that for the idea of kind of following your own will. Here we get to kind of the biggest uh, swap between the, the two decks where we have these the strength and justice or adjustment, depending on which deck you're looking at, um, get swapped around. So in the hardy tarot, because the majors are numbered, um, justice is at position eight and that does relate to adjustment but it's using the let's go ahead and pull this one out it's using the name of the Waitsmith smith deck so again it, it feels very much like a kind of a nod to both decks. I think we can see here that the figure and the, the body posture and the, the positioning and everything aligns more with the Waitsmith Justice, but it is in the eighth position as we see for adjustment in the Crowley Harris deck. This is interesting because this Hermit is almost like a little bit reminiscent of the Fool in the um, Wait, Smith deck where we have the figure kind of standing on the cliff. I think that's really interesting. The lantern, which we do see represented in both cards, but just this kind of lone figure that is more in that kind of introspection has a little bit less of the dynamic energy that we see in the, the Thoth Hermit card here. Interesting that like she's kind of holding on to the tree and leaning over the side. I think that's pretty cool. So here we have our fortune or wheel of fortune in the Wait Smith. Again, this this one I feel like it really translates across all three all three decks. Really matches up well. Okay, so here we have. Um our Lust card in the Crowley Harris deck and then in the Hardy it is in the same position as Lust but it's been named Strength and you can see here that I've pulled the Waitsmith Strength which is normally in position 8. I've pulled it here into the 11th position so that we could compare apples to apples here in terms of the artwork. Um, it's an interesting Strength card again in the Hardy Tarot. Again I kind of feel like it's a, it's a blend of both. Um, in the Lust card, we see that the figure is riding the beast. In the Waitsmith, we see that the figure is kind of trying to tame the beast. And here in this Hardy Strength card, it's kind of the, the figure is the beast, which is quite quite interesting. I do actually really enjoy that interpretation of it. Our hanged man, and while the hanging figures are the same, right? We have a hanging figure in all three decks. You can see that the... Um, leg position is the same as we see here in the Smith weight cards um, in the party tarot whereas in the thought the leg position goes the other way and there is significance to that so um, you can see that the hands are in a different position in all three cards so here the hands are behind them here the hands are open and um, nailed and here the arms are just kind of hanging free it doesn't feel like it feels like a kind of in between these two it's not a forced surrender like we see here in the Harris artwork where we have the figure is really nailed to to the background in the Waitsmith, smith it feels much more like a, a willing surrender and in the 
hearty. It almost kind of feels like it's a, well, I'm here, so I guess I'll surrender to it. But I maybe didn't necessarily want to be in this position in the first place, which is quite interesting. Death card in all three decks. I absolutely love the death card in the hearty tarot. Um, I love that she's riding the big black horse. It is death herself when we see all the spider webs and the kind of the skulls and the decay. It's not the idea that death is coming to get you. It's the idea that you are death, which is quite interesting. And I really enjoy that interpretation. There is no book with the hardy tarot. So everything that I am speaking to is just things that have come to me as I've worked with this deck, um, because there is no guidebook for this deck. It's just, just the cards. Temperance or art, depending on which deck you're looking at. Again, um, I feel like this is really a blend of the two systems because we do have um, the word temperance here, as we see in the Smith Waite deck, but we do have the kind of two figure, two headed figure that we see in the art card in the Crowley Harris deck. So here we have the devil. And the thing that's really interesting about um, the devil in the Hardy Tarot is that the devil has the face of man. And I think that's a really interesting commentary, right? We see it with the, the goat and we have the, the animal, more animalistic figures in the other two decks. But in the Hardy Tarot, the face, as you can see, is highlighted with that um, pentagram. And so it really pulls to the idea that the man is the devil. The devil is not a construct outside of us. We embody it. And so I kind of love that idea for the devil um, in this particular deck. The tower, and again, I feel like it's definitely more reminiscent of the Waitsmith Smith Tower, where we have the kind of... Um, single tower with the cracks in it, the lightning, and the people flailing from the, the building. The much more idea of, of sort of upheaval, I think, in the Crowley Harris um, tower. And even more so in the Smith Waite, because it's a little bit more in your face, whereas here in this tower card, it's, we're more removed. It's really interesting because the people are really far away. It really does speak to the idea that like things are gonna happen, but like it's not gonna be the end of the world. So here we have our star card, and I do love this star card in the Hardy Tarot. I love that we have the colors, the blues reminiscent from the um, Crowley Harris deck. I think this one definitely aligns more with the Thoth, which is interesting, because um, we definitely have more of that almost celestial figure whereas here we see kind of the human embodying the star energy this to me feels like it could be the star herself i love that we have this tree coming up the side here and we have this almost kind of watery energy which is really wonderful our moon card which again to me feels a bit like a hybrid between the two decks so the crowley hair this is we have the two figures but it is also reminiscent of the wade smith with the two dogs down here so um interesting moon card i think it kind of leans more it makes me think more of the uh, Smith Waite interpretation of the moon than the Crowley Harris, but I do think it's a beautiful kind of blend of both of the, those um, both of those cards. So here we have the sun card, which to me definitely embodies that Crowley Harris version of the sun. We have the two figures down here. We have all the the beautiful butterflies coming out. The we have more of the geometric version of the sun, where we have um, more shapes, and over here we have you know the big sunburst with the face in it. But we do have the sun flowers, which we see in the Wade Smith. So again, I feel like it's a beautiful blend. So here we have our judgment card, which I will admit I was a little sad to see. It's not an Eon card and it doesn't look like an Eon card. It definitely, definitely resembles more of the Wade Smith, which is a little bit of a bummer for me because I love this idea. Again, we have Horus and Osiris and um, Isis, which I would have really liked to have seen in the Hardy Tarot. So it definitely leans more Waitsmith Smith in that way. The universe, which again, the world in the, both the Hardy and the Waitsmith. Smith, sorry, I said universe, that is in the Crowley Harris. I think that again, it's a beautiful blend. Uh, she has in this one, she has the uh, kind of uh, baton things here, like we see over in the Waitsmith. Smith. This is one of those cards that's pretty similar across decks and we do have the this the world rather than the universe again i would have liked to have seen more of the thought association all right so moving into our minor arcana we're just going to kind of take a quick flip through um so we just kind of see where the the artwork is the same and where it's different we're going to start with the cups and i think here in the minors you'll really start to see um where we we get more of that thought influence in the artwork there are no keywords on the hardy tarot so um if you like the thought associations but maybe don't jive with the keywords this might be a good deck for that again similar configuration in the cups that we see 
in the uh, Crowley Harris deck. But the interesting thing is, is we kind of have all this like harvesty abundance going on here. So again, it's almost like a blend. Here we have our Four of Cups. Again, I feel like it definitely ties more into the idea of the Crowley Harris. Again, luxury, more of that luxury than the disappointment that we see here or the disillusionment that we see in the Waitsmith. But I think with this moon kind of shining down here, you could pull that sort of disillusionment out of this particular card as well because we have that moon with that, you know, things aren't always as they appear in the moonlight, right? It's a little bit of illusion. So we kind of have that luxury idea here from the Thoth with the configuration of the cups as well as all this kind of growth down here at the bottom. But again, that moon kind of ties us into a little bit back to that Waitsmith where we have that a little bit of disillusionment. Here we have our Five of Cups. Again, the configuration is we get the, the cups kind of in the central focus. We have this octopus coming up and dumping all the cups over, which really ties into that disappointment of our Six of Cups. And now that I'm looking at these really side by side, I really can see the influences from both systems within the Hardy Tarot. Um, we, you know, can see the pleasure that we get in the Six of Cups of the Crowley Harris, but we also have kind of the, the flower and the nostalgia with the butterflies and the innocence that we see in the Smith Waite. So here in our Seven of Cups, I think we are definitely leaning more into, into the Thoth, right? It's more about that, that excess and that overwhelm than it is kind of more the pie in the sky energy we get with the Seven of Cups. I think when you see them side by side, like kind of the, the energy is there, right? There's this, this hint, this energy of overwhelm. It's too much. Whether it's too much in this kind of heavy, boggy marsh thing we have going on in the Crowley Harris, or it's too much and as in all these options we have going going on in the Smith Weight Eight of Cups. Again, I feel like we can kind of see a little bit of both. I do like that the cups almost create like this tree-like figure in the middle because you can see all the, the thing although um, liquid flowing out. And as we move up, there's less and less in the in the cups. There's a little bug in here. Really, this idea is as we move on that we see here in the Smith Weight as we move on, you know, we're letting go of some of that. And I think we really get that idea through that as well. And you can also see that it's also mirrored here kind of in the water falling from um, the cups below, you know, above to the cups below. So here we have our nine of cups in the uh, Crowley. We have happiness. And I think you can kind of see that kind of happiness and contentment across all three decks actually. Again, I feel like it leans more into to the to the Crowley Harris deck in terms of the the way that the cups are even structured a little bit. Um, you know, rather than having the big rainbow, we have more of the uh, shape or the the geometric kind of figure in the center that the cups make. When we get into the court cards in the Hardy Tarot, it's interesting because um, it does align with the Thoth progression. However, instead of princesses, we have pages, and that really is a big disappointment to me. I really would have liked to have seen um, the, the pages be princesses because I like that balance of masculine and feminine energy that you get in the courts when you have a princess, a prince, a queen, and a king or a knight, depending on which system you're looking at. Um, I do feel like this is kind of an interesting blend of the two because where we do have the the fish in the the cup um, that we see in the Waitsmith, we have kind of more of the energetic flow uh, that we get in the Crowley Harris deck. So here in the Thoth and the Hardy, we have the Prince, whereas in the Waite Smith, we have the Knights. Again, in the Thoth system, the Knights are the uh, in place of the King. There is no King in this in that in those decks. So here we have the Prince of Cups. Here we have our Queen of Cups. She feels more in alignment with the Smith Waite. I, I don't know if it's the big shell behind her that that reminds me of the throne here. It's even kind of the same coloring. Um, it definitely feels more in the space of the Smith Waite than the Thoth for me. And here we have our knight in the Thoth and the Hardy, and then of course the king in the Wait Smith. If we look at the knight, you know, let's just do that so you can kind of see a little bit of both in there. Um, I definitely get more of the kind of almost the Wait Smith knight. So let's let's just pull that out. Not so much of the fluid motion that we see in the the Thoth. I also don't get a ton of like cup energy other than he looks very like a uh, regal knight, uh, knight in shining armor, which is definitely a uh, correlation that we can make with the Knight of Cups. All these cards are sliding around on me. 
Okay, so moving into our discs, I think you can definitely tell that in the um, discs, we also have not only the discs rather than pentacles as we see in the Smith weight, but we also have very much that geometric um, energy that we have in the Thoth or Crowley Harris tarot. Again, same with the two. Um, again, kind of an interesting blend because whereas the uh, central figures are top and bottom here in the Crowley Harris, they're side to side here as they kind of are um, a little bit more side to side in the Smith weight. So again, it kind of feels like a little bit more of a blend, but I feel like the coloring and the um, all the geometric energy in it speaks more to the Crowley Harris deck. And here we have our three. You can see that kind of triangle gear wheel thing going on between these two cards, but it also mirrors what's going on up here in the, the Smith weight card as well. So here we have our four of discs, which to me really doesn't align very well with the Thoth Tarot, which is a little bit disappointing. It definitely feels more in alignment in terms of how the pentacles are kind of all just combined and kind of gathered in together. It feels a little bit like they're um, kind of get that a little bit that miser energy with it because they're all squished together in the middle rather than in the Thoth where we see them, you know, that the elements uh, creating this nice stable boxy structure, which is definitely more how I see the four. I don't see that um, kind of stability represented in the Hardy Tarot. So here we see our five of discs and I think this one is very reminiscent of the uh, uh, Crowley Harris deck but we do have the central figure the person and as you can see they're kind of being pulled and and being um, tied up to these wheels and the, or these stones in the four corners of the card which does kind of I think have a little bit of a nod to that Waitsmith as in kind of like this is this isn't of your own accord right you're you're some you've been bound into this situation um and it's really interesting how and you can see in the background in the purple we have lots of kind of scary looking creatures there's some octopus there's maybe a scorpion in there snake animals that that can kind of trigger those those fears or those worries it's a quite interesting card i love the colors on it six of disc again i feel like it kind of is a blend between the two instead of having this nice geometric shape here that we have in the Crowley Harris we kind of have this uh, it is a nice balanced figure that we get and we have these kind of two central spheres in the middle and then the four spheres on the outside. Um, I think you can see kind of both energies represented in this six of discs if you're really looking for it. Um, so here we have our seven of discs which to me leans way more into the Crowley Harris. Definitely get that that kind of failure idea that kind of um, all of these discs are in this kind of dark cloud that's just kind of circulating around it which is quite beautiful. Beautiful. So here we have our Ada disc, which again leans way more into the Thoth for me. I love this card. It's one of my favorite. I love that we have the snow on the tree. Kind of the same sense of like, this is our card of knowing that that things come in their own time. And I think you can actually see that across all of all of the cards. Nine of discs. And you can see that as far as the geometric influence, we have a little bit of Thoth, but we have kind of more of that uh, kind of blooming garden, happy um, abundance influence that we see in the Smith weight. So again, really interesting blend of both. 10, we kind of get that whole circle of abundance going on here. Um, there's a little deer underneath, which is quite interesting. And to me, that kind of speaks to the, speaks a little bit, like a little nod to the, the Smith weight. There, there is there is that kind of happily ever after, like everything's kind of come together, but it's on the top of the deer's head and that can be kind of heavy to carry, which kind of leans a little bit into the thought. Okay, so back to our princesses or our page, as we see in the Hardy and the Smith weight. This, this particular page of discs really leans more into the Thoth for me, mostly because of the unhuman figure that we have here. Uh, really is kind of, I think, a nod to the princess in the Crowley Harris. There is no actual disc in this card, almost like the moon itself is a disc, which is quite interesting. So I'm going to switch these around because I feel like the princes in the Thoth and the Hardy actually lean a little bit more into the kind of king, the smith weight, and then the knights, of course, correspond with the knights. Um, I don't know if that would be considered proper, but it just in this particular instance, it feels more in alignment with that energy. Because um, if you look here at this Prince of Dis, it, it does have a bit of that smith weight king of pentacles energy. We get none of the influence that we see here in this Prince of 
of um, Dis in the Crowley Harris definitely leans more into the Smith Weight King for me. Our Queen of Discs. And I do quite love this Queen of Discs in the Hardy Tarot. It doesn't really have the feel of either one of the other systems other than we kind of get the fierceness that we see in the Queen of Discs in the Thoth. And interesting that she's like, she's kind of wearing, she's wearing the skin of an animal. And I don't know how well that really ties into this Queen of Pentacles energy, but I do absolutely love the fierceness she has because she's very much like the, the mama bear going to protect everything that is within her her domain and everything that matters to her, which I think is a very much a Queen of Dis energy. And I quite, I do quite love that. So here we have our knight. And again, I've swapped the knights and the kings and the smith weight so that we could align with what I feel is going on in the other two decks. We definitely get the same kind of energy, I think, across all three decks. I do love that rather than riding a horse, this knight is actually riding a, a, a stag. Um, I think that's quite cool. So moving into our swords, again, I think all three swords cards are, are pretty similar. I like that we have kind of the geometric energy going on in the Hardy Tarot that kind of more closely aligns with the Crowley Harris. Two, I, I again, I think is a really interesting blend of both cards. I really like this uh, card in this deck. We kind of get to the idea of rather than the uh, swords crossing or being a, an opposing of each other in the these two decks, we see that they come together and they cross just ever so slightly at the top. We also have kind of the day and night, the black and white, white, um, really giving that idea of not only of kind of being of two minds or maybe trying to find that decision in between, but we can also see a little bit of this Thoth keyword as, as kind of finding the peace in that common ground, which I think is just beautiful. I, I really love the, the two of swords in this deck. And the three of swords is another reason why I bought the Hardy Tarot because it definitely more closely aligns with how I look at the three of swords. Interesting that in the both the Thoth and the Waitsmith, the three of swords really speak to that idea of kind of sorrow or heartbreak. We see that in the keyword here in the Crowley Harris and in the imagery here in the Smith Waite, which is not at all how I read the Three of Swords. I read the Three of Swords as growth of the mind that can come from, you know, a place of, of uncomfortableness and as growth often does, right? We often learn the most through those harder lessons, which I feel like that is represented absolutely beautifully in this Three of Swords and the Hardy Tarot, where we have this kind of all those heavy clouds, right? Those are the hard lessons that we've had to learn to get to the clear skies underneath. And it's just beautiful. Um, again, I think it goes its own way. And in this respect, it goes in the way that aligns with how I read the Three of Swords. So I love it. Here's our Four of Swords again, which I think is more reminiscent of the Crowley Harris deck, which is quite lovely. A five of swords. We can kind of see that disruptive energy that we see reflected in both cards. I love that we have the single sword in the center that is actually piercing the flower. I love that interpretation for the five of swords, really that idea of the, the thing that disrupts everything else, right? And it's going to push its way through. Whether that's a good or a bad thing depends on the context of the situation, but I love that depiction. Here we have the Six of Swords, which I think definitely leans more into the Thoth, right? We're really looking at that idea of science and of, of learning from an informed decision, whereas in the, you know, the Smith Waite, we, we get that idea of kind of, we're leaving. Um, totally different interpretations for the, the Six of Swords, and I think it definitely, and the Hardy Tarot leans more Thoth. Um, same with the Seven of Swords. I definitely feel like we get kind of more of that Thoth imagery represented there. That Thoth alignment is there, um, not only in the artwork and kind of having the one sword in the center with all the other swords kind of coming at it. Uh, whereas in the, of course, the Smith weight, we get that everybody always relates it to that thiefy energy. That's not how I read the Seven of Swords. So it definitely aligns, I think, more closely with the Thoth inter interpretation of kind of those self-deflating thoughts that we often see represented in the sword suit. So here we have our Eight of Swords, which I feel like, again, is a beautiful blend of these two systems because we, we definitely get the kind of overall pattern and idea of interference that we see in the um, Eight of Swords in the Crowley Harris deck. But we also get, because we have these three eyes in the center, we also get that idea of kind of being bound by this situation that we see represented in the uh, Smith Wake deck, because these eyes, they're, they're open, but they're behind all the swords. So we really can get this idea of kind of being bound by what's going on um, in our situation. And it's, I think it's just a beautiful blend of both of the systems. 
So here we have the Nine of Swords, which again, I feel leans more into the uh, Crowley Harris depiction. Um, we definitely get that idea of kind of self-inflicted pain or maybe the pain that we inflict on others. It's hard to know whether these figures did that to themselves or to each other, but I think that really speaks to the idea of cruelty. Um, whereas we tend to see the Smith weight as being kind of the, that nightmare card, right? That, but I think you can get the idea of kind of really dynamic, overwhelming, really difficult mental energy that you can see rep reflected across all three cards. Here's our Ten of Swords. Again, I feel like it's a beautiful blend of both of these. We have the swords kind of in the same configuration, but flipped upside down than we see in the Smith Waite. Um, but we have a lot of the fire and dynamic energy that we see represented in the Crowley Harris deck. And you can see with the, the keyword of ruin, you could definitely get that, although swords are forged in fire. So I love that idea that um, you can kind of grow from this place as well, right? This is This is the hard stuff that helps you to to learn and grow and move on from where you are. I think that's beautiful. So here we have our Page of Swords, and I just, I really love the Page of Swords in the Hardy Tarot. It has a very kind of sweet energy, and you can see this, this figure is like, has the sword, and they're fighting all these snakes, but you can definitely see that she's like standing her ground. Again, I would have loved this to have been named Princess, but I get that's a really nitpicky thing. Um, I think the energy overall is between, it really leans more thought to that idea of kind of standing your ground, speaking your truth, um, which I don't quite get Get that in the Smith uh, Smith weight interpretation, but I just I think it's a beautiful card. Here we have our princes in the Thoth and the Hardy, and then I've swapped it out again for the uh, Smith weight because again I feel like the princes really relate more to that king energy that we see in the Smith weight. I do quite like this Prince of Swords because it's very confrontational, and I feel like it does kind of embody that idea of the of the King of Swords of being very sure about your mind. You, you're you very clear, you're very focused, and despite whatever's going on around you, you're not letting your mindset waver, despite all of the kind of whatever heaviness might be going on around you, which I think is quite interesting. Here we have our Queen of Swords, which I feel like does its own thing in the Hardy Tarot. I like the interpretation that she's kind of like, she's leaned up against her sword. Like, she she feels very much like she's in meditation. She's in quiet space where she's just reflecting on what it is that needs to be done. And I, I really like the energy of that for the Queen of Swords. It's a bit more introspective than we see perhaps um, in the other two decks. And here we have our knights. We have a lot of movement. We have a lot going on in the clouds in the background, although it's kind of a little bit more of a darker, darker scene. Um, there's a lot of dark clouds in the Hardy Tarot. The one thing that we see in the uh, Hardy Tarot is that we have the wings on the, the figure and the horse as well, which does, I think, relate nicely back to the Crowley Harris Knight of Swords. Again, really wonderful blend of the two systems. Okay, and finally moving into our wand suit, I think you can see that the uh, energy is pretty similar across the, the three decks. I feel like we definitely get more of the fire energy in the Hardy and of course the Crowley Harris than we do in the Smith Weight. Uh, so I definitely feel like you get more of an elemental association here in these two decks. So here's our two of wands, which again, I feel leans definitely more toward the Thoth. We even have kind of the same crossing of the, the symbols there, the, the arrows and the hardy tarot. Um, and I, I like that we do have kind of a background that's a little bit reminiscent of the Mythweight card. Really interesting nod to both decks. So here we have the Three of Wands, which I love in the Hardy Tarot. Like there's a lot of cards I love in this deck. It's interesting how in each card, the wands are all in a different configuration. We have them kind of crossed um, crossed here. We have them uh, two that we have them separated, kind of standing tall in the Smith weight. And then in the Hardy, they create a triangle with this beautiful spider in between. And I just really love that imagery. I feel like we do get some of the coloration that we see in these in the Thoth tarot represented there, but it does kind of do its own thing. And I think that's really beautiful. So here we have our Four of Wands. Again, definitely, I think, leaning more Thoth in terms of not only the depiction, but also the interpretation. 
Here we have our Five of Wands. Again, another card that I absolutely love in the Hardy Tarot. I feel like we definitely get that idea of strife that we see actually in both systems, that idea of kind of discord. And you can see that here uh, represented in the Hardy Five of Wands. We have the Five Wands that are pointing down and we have the uh, the birds that are kind of coming and creating this little bit of chaos in, in this mix, which is quite interesting. So here we have the Six of Wands um, with victory in the Thoth. And I think, again, this is a really interesting blend because it really speaks to the idea of victory, but at what cost? Because you can see all of these wands are through the snake. So this snake, it may be a victory for the person who killed the snake, but it's definitely not a victory for the snake. So I, I love this interpretation in the Hardy because for me, every time I see it, it is victory, but it's victory at what cost? So here we have the Seven of Wands. Again, I think in, a, in terms of the design, of the cards definitely meaning more, leaning more Crowley Harris. I think you can kind of see that represented in the seven of wands too with the central wand um, being kind of almost this icy fire and then the six wands beneath it that are kind of either alighting it, giving it energy, or maybe trying to burn it down, depending on how you're looking at it. You have kind of had this duality of, of fire and ice that I see here in this card. It's quite interesting. Here we have our Eight of Wands, which I feel like leans more into the Smith Wade because we definitely get the wands kind of like shooting through the air, but rather than coming down, they're going up, which is quite interesting. Um, it does kind of relate back to the, again, the keyword of swiftness that we see in the Thoth Tarot. So again, I feel like it is a little bit of a blend of both. Here we have our Nine of Wands um, with Strength. Again, I feel like the imagery leans more Thoth, but we can definitely see aspects of both in this card. Again, I feel like is an interesting interpretation of both because you could see that sort of heavy oppressive energy um, that we get in the Crowley Harris deck, but you can also see that kind of taking the responsibility for it that we see in the Smith weight because we have these hands that are grabbing the wands, right? So it may be heavy, it may be oppressive, it may be a lot to carry, but you're going, you're going to carry it. And I think that's really cool. So here we have our pages. And again, I feel like we're more reminiscent of the Thoth here, kind of with the flow and the energy. Um, whereas this page is just kind of standing proud and tall. We definitely get that fiery energy and movement and flow uh, in the Crowley Harris as well as the Hardy Tarot. So here we have our princes. And again, I've swapped out to the king because I feel like that energy more closely aligns. Uh, again, I do feel like the prince in the Hardy Tarot aligns more closely with the king than it does with the the uh, Prince of Wands and the Thoth. But again, I, I like the energy. I like the fire. Um, sometimes the faces are, are a little bit off, <laughs> but that to me just kind of, it's like the Anakay. It just adds to the charm of the deck. Here we have our Queen of Wands, which again, I think is a really interesting blend of the two cards because I definitely get the fire and the power that we see in the Queen of Wands in the Crowley Harris, but we kind of get the nod to the Waitsmith there with the black cats. It almost kind of looks a little bit like a sun, kind of a little bit like this sunburst behind her, a little bit like the sunflower. It's kind of a beautiful blend of both. And finally, we have our Knight of Wands, which I feel like leans more into the Thoth, Her into the Crowley Harris. And we have um, this beautiful, you know, knight just charging in with all the fire, again, all the big black heavy clouds. And it's just going to charge through and, and take command of what's going on here, which I think is quite beautiful. So that was a look at the Hardy Tarot in comparison to the um, Thoth Tarot and the Smithwaite Tarot. That was really interesting. I don't know if you found it interesting, but I found it interesting. I knew in working with this deck that there was a lot of things about it that leaned more into the Thoth um, tarot system in the minors. And I do feel like the majors a little bit more closely aligned with the Smith weight. So it's a really interesting blend of the two systems, but in some ways it definitely goes its own way. Um, I'll just do a quick, quick flip through as I talk here in case you skipped the side by side and just want to see all the cards. Um, whoops, upside down. Uh, favorite death card. I love this death card. There's so many things about this deck. Um, probably should have checked it first. Um, there's so many things about this deck that I really like that I think are really smartly done. It is a beautiful blend of the two systems where I feel like the creator kind of took a few things from the um, Waite Smith and a few things from the Thoth. Although I do feel that despite this judgment card here, like this sun card, this sun card is very Thoth. This judgment card is very Smith Waite. Um, 
which does kind of bum me out a little bit because I love the the Eon or Aeon card in the Thoth Tarot. I would have liked to have seen that in here. Um, but again, I feel like it definitely in the minor arcana as we see here definitely leans more uh, Waite Smith. Let me fix these. I think I have them fixed now. Um, I think that the minors are really, really interesting in this deck because the structure or the kind of main design, maybe main theme of the cards definitely feels uh, more Thoth aligned. Like in the Seven of Cups, this is a very Thothy card. But I think in a lot of these, you can kind of see this little nod to the Smith weight, right? This little bit of a pulling in some elements from it, which is quite interesting. Um, I do have to say that, like, I am really enjoying working with this deck. I really enjoy the interpretations. It does a lot of really smart things in the cards. Um, the one card that I would say that just really doesn't align with how I read the tarot very well is this Four of Discs, but that's like the one card, right? And that's pretty good. Um, I absolutely love the depictions. I love the colors. There's just something about the colors in this deck. I love all the darkness, the um, kind of... I don't know if it's the printing or the actual coloration that the creator chose um, and how this comes out. I love all the clouds like you can see, especially in the sword suit. There's a lot of like dark heaviness, um, which I think is very indicative of the swords. Love this page of swords. There's so much about this deck that I just really enjoy that I think is really smartly done. It's a beautiful blend, I think, of the two systems. Now, I looked on the creator's Etsy shop, which is where I purchased this deck, um, and I didn't see any obvious statement where it was saying it was one system or the other. So I really do feel like it's a blend of both. Again, I love this Five of Wands, love this Six of Wands. There's just so much about this deck that I just find to be really, really smartly done. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous blend. Um, and I thought that, whoops, missed my queen. Um, I thought that maybe the the titles and the, the borders would bother me because like we have this like on all of them. Oh, I have edged mine. <laughs> I've edged my deck already, which ought to tell you something. I edged it to try and match the um, central uh, color in the middle. It didn't quite come out. I might redo it. I might do it over in black or something, but it's really interesting because I thought that these like borders were gonna bug me. Like when I lay them down, let me just go ahead and shuffle it. I do have to say that the cardstock is, um, I really, really like it. It is very, uh, very shuffleable. It's not quite as flimsy as a Llewellyn. Um, it does have a little bit more, I would say it's like in between a Llewellyn and a US Games deck. It's not quite as flimsy as a Llewellyn. I shouldn't say flimsy. It's not quite as bendy as a Llewellyn, but it's also not quite as stiff and cardboardy as a US Games. It's actually a really beautiful, beautiful kind of hybrid in between the two, and it shuffles beautifully. I don't know. Do I like the pale green? I mean, the kind of olivey green. I do kind of like it. I might leave it. Anyway, um, one of the things that I thought might really bother me with this deck is the... Uh, is the 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 borders it's borderless on the two sides but on the top and bottom we have this big eyeball thing and the numbers and the either title or association and I did think that that was going to bother me but it really really doesn't like at all it doesn't matter how many cards I get on the table I just the um that decorative border really doesn't bother me and I kind of like the eye it's almost like this deck, I will tell you, is like been really great for like calling me out on things. Um, it definitely doesn't sugarcoat anything. Um, I definitely get get the message that I need and I get it in a way that that really makes sense and aligns with how I read the tarot, which is always, always wonderful. Um, I'm not going to go too much into actually working with it because I will talk about that in my monthly reflections when I share um, kind of how I've been working with this deck. But again, it's like a beautiful, beautiful blended system. And I just kind of wanted to take some time to uh, sit down and do that flip through um, 
for myself and for anybody else who was interested in seeing this deck in comparison to the Thoth and the Smith Weight, um, that was really interesting. And there were a lot of places that like I knew it aligned and there were some places where it was kind of a surprise that it aligned one way or the other. I love this Three of Swords. I really appreciate a deck that kind of honors the systems of the past but isn't afraid to do its own thing and go its own way. I find that really um, quite wonderful and refreshing. I feel like tarot as a reflection of humanity and of the human experience should be allowed to grow and change as humans do. And so I love to see decks that, that really kind of aren't afraid to adapt and change with the times. I think that's quite wonderful. So yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful deck. I, I'm like, it's, I'm going to be honest, it's it's like my favorite deck right this five minutes. Um, it's the deck that I'm using for the monthly medicine. I'm really, really enjoying working with it. And again, it's been really, really wonderful. So that's it. I just wanted to do a kind of quick, it wasn't quick. I just wanted to do a flip through and comparison of the Hardy Tarot with um, my Thoth and the Rider Waite Smith and I thought it would be really interesting. I would love to know if you have this deck, what you think of it, so please feel free to share with me in the comments below. Again, I'll talk more about actually working with it in my monthly reflections. In the meantime, my friends, thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to sharing with you again soon.